Okay. Uh, well, thanks for coming out. Another um, uh, great day, I think, uh, for the Toronto Raptors, uh, introducing uh, Bobby Webster as our uh, new uh, general manager. Um, it's, uh, I think it's it's long time coming. Um, uh, Bobby came here with me um, uh, four years ago and um, has really, really served, grown, uh, been a huge part of uh, this organization. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really proud, uh, very well deserved uh, to get uh, Bobby into this, uh, into this position that uh, Jeff Weltman left. Um, I, I know the questions will be asked about hiring somebody outside, and, uh, but with the Raptors, we believe in development, and it's not only on-court uh, development. I think um, uh, front office, coaching, uh, we want to give opportunity, and to give opportunity to a young man like this, I think, is, is, uh, is very well deserved. Um, I know it's been a crazy day uh, in the NBA. Um, today is all about Bobby Webster. He deserves it. Uh, also, Dan Tolzman and Keith uh, Bioski, uh, who we promoted. Um, it's that day. You know, um, everything we've done in this organization and, and going forward, they've contributed in every way that they could and have been a big part of it. So um, I think today is about Bobby. So congratulations. The boy from Hawaii. <laughs> uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I thought it might just be me and Rovin, so <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, uh, no, first off, honestly, I, I wanted to thank Masai, um, Larry, Melissa, and the board um, for giving me this opportunity. I think it's it's truly a testament to their support and belief, uh, not only in me, but as Masai said, kind of growing and developing. Uh, their employees. And without their support and belief from day one, I wouldn't be in this position. So um, at the same time, I think Keith and Dan, uh, they also feel that. And as we all kind of rise up, I think uh, you know we don't take it for granted, and we're extremely grateful. Um, at the same time, we're ready, we're confident uh, to continue building a franchise here. Um, not only the front office, the coaches, the travel staff, uh, you know, we believe in Masai, and Masai believes in us, so we'll keep it going. Questions? Questions? Bobby, uh, what do you, how do you see your role changing as compared to what it was before, and what do you bring, bring to it? Right. Um, you know, I think the, the obvious answer is my voice is a little louder, but from the start, Masai has always been really collaborative, and we've all been in, involved in all of the big decisions. So. Um, on that front, I don't think it changes a ton. I think, you know, free agency, draft, trades, we've all been a part of it, so I don't, I don't think there's a, a ton of difference. What do you feel you have to learn, Bobby, as mm -hmm. you grow into a, a job that you've seen done that you haven't done? Um, there's, there's always new situations, you know. This summer in free agency, there'll be uh, different circumstances and different situations, and so Masai has been great, and every year that I've been here, he's given me more responsibility. Um, I've learned from him. Jeff obviously has a ton of experience, so just a lot of the times it's just being a, uh, being a fly on the wall, traveling with them, being in the same room as them, um, and so more experience, you know, new situations, and just continuing. What's the biggest thing you've learned from the side? Um, incredible leader. I think he's. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a huge thing. I think you know he leads with with a passion and a purpose that people follow, and you know I don't know if you can. Uh, you can learn that, but you can emulate it and you can and make it your own. Bobby, this is the time of year, draft time, where we're reminded what a double-edged sword age can be as a player with mm -hmm. the younger prospects sort of seen as having more room to grow and the older yep. prospects seen as having more experience, maybe being more ready to contribute. Mm -hmm. Does age play any factor, any impact in the front office? Um, I don't think, listen, I know I'm young. I'm probably even younger looking. Um, <laughs> but... You know, I think I have a unique set of experiences and circumstances that have gotten me here. So um, I'll continue to grow. You're never, you know, you're never, you're never a finished product. Um, the thing I actually took away from kind of the whole youth uh, question was, 
I think this is what, if you have leadership like Larry and the board that believes in people and gives them opportunity, um, I guess the, the answer is I wish it happened more often, right? This is kind of what we all have strived to do. And um, I think it's just a really positive thing. Bobby, during the last CBA change, you were in the league office. Mm -hmm. When the new CBA came out this year, how was that different for you in terms of turning that into like a useful organizational information? I'm not as helpful anymore. No. No. Um, you know, there weren't a ton of changes for the CBA, and so a lot of it was my former bosses and colleagues at the league office who I had learned so much from in my previous job. And so this was a lot of hours talking to them on the phone and, and making sure I, uh, I understood it as, much, as, as well as I did last time. You guys yep. have four free agents. Uh -huh. um, any thoughts on how you're going to approach them you know, one by one in the next week or so? You know, we'll, uh, when the time is you know, appropriate, we'll set up you know, time to talk with them. I think, uh, fortunately, I was in, a, in the last couple of years I've been in those meetings. So, you know, I, I think they're not as you know, crazy as you would think. You sit down and you kind of talk as, as as adults and professionals and people who love basketball. So I don't think that changes. I think, you know, Masai will 100%, you know, be the guy in charge and, and I'll be there to, to, to fill in with my relationships with the players and, and our views. And then now that you're the general manager, you're going to have to get questions like this given what happens on the news cycle day to day. Yeah. Given some of the news about, um, around Masai today from another organization, do you suspect that he will be your boss and he'll be, he'll, he'll be able to collaborate with him in the season? You know, I listen to speculation every day. I don't, you know, you know, think I need to necessarily comment on that specifically. But the stability between Larry and Masai in this organization, I think, is clear, and um, I'm happy to to be part of be part of all of it. When you were with the league, did you aspire to be on this side? Is it something you thought about a lot, or just kind of um, I think I've always I've always intrigued to come to the team and and. Actually, a lot of people don't know I started at a team. I started with the Orlando Magic. So there was a little bit of learning in Orlando and then kind of theorizing in my head what I wanted to do. So yeah, there's always, there's always been this intrigue. And um, you know, I think anyone who gets into this business either wants to be a GM or a coach. So.